The Second Battle of the Aisne French, Bataille du Chemin des Dames or Seconde Bataille de l'Aisne, 16 April, mid-May 1917 was the main part of the Nouvelle Offensive, a Franco-British attempt to inflict a decisive defeat on the German armies in France. The Entente strategy was to conduct offensives offensives from north to south, beginning with an attack by the British Expeditionary Force BEF, then the main attack by two French army groups on the Aisne. General Robert Nivelle planned the offensive in December 1916, after he replaced Joseph Joffrey as Commander-in-Chief of the French Army. The objective of the attack on the Aisne was to capture the prominent 80 km long 50 miles, east-west ridge of the Chemin des Dames, 110 km 68 miles northeast of Paris and then advance northwards to capture the city of Lon. When the French armies met the British advancing from the Arras front, the Germans would be pursued towards Belgium and the German frontier. The offensive began on 9 April, when the British began the Battle of Arras. On 16 April, the Group d'Armes de Reserve Gar, Reserve Army Group attacked the Chemin des Dames and the next day, the 4th Army, part of Group d'Armes de Centre GAC, Central Army Group, near Reims to the southeast, began the Battle of the Hills. The Chemin des Dames ridge had been quarried for stone for centuries, leaving a warren of caves and tunnels which were used as shelters by German troops to escape the French bombardment. The offensive met massed German machine gun and artillery fire, which inflicted many casualties and repulsed the French infantry at many points. The French achieved a substantial tactical success and took c. 29,000 prisoners but failed to defeat decisively the German armies. The failure had a traumatic effect on the morale of the French army and many divisions mutinied. Nivelle was superseded by General Philippe Payton, who adopted a strategy of healing and defence. To resume the wearing out of the German army while conserving French infantry. Payton began a substantial program re equipment of the French army, had 40 to 62 mutineers shot as scapegoats and provided better food, more pay, and more leave, which led to a considerable improvement in morale. The new French strategy was not one of passive defence. In June and July, the 4th, 6th, and 10th Armies conducted several limited attacks, and the 1st Army was sent to Flanders to participate in the Third Battle of Ypres. The British prolonged the Arras offensive into mid May, despite uncertainty about French intentions, high losses, and diminishing returns, as divisions were transferred northwards to Flanders. The British captured Messines Ridge on 7 June and spent the rest of the year on the offensive in the Third Battle of Ypres, the 31st of July to the 10th of November, and the Battle of Cambrai, the 20th of November to the 8th of December. The mutinies in the French armies became known in general to the Germans, but the cost of the defensive success on the Aisne made it impossible to reinforce Flanders and conduct more than local operations on the Aisne and in Champagne. A French attack at Verdun in August recaptured much of the ground lost in 1916 and in the Battle of La Malmaison in October captured the west end of the Chemin des Dames and forced the Germans to withdraw to the north bank of the Eilat. Topic. Background Topic. Strategic developments Nivelle believed the Germans had been exhausted by the Battle of Verdun and the Battle of the Somme in 1916 and could not resist a breakthrough offensive, which could be completed in 24 to 48 hours. The main attack on the Aisne would be preceded by a large diversionary attack by the British Third and First Armies at Arras. The French War Minister, Hubert Lyuti and Chief of Staff General Henri-Philippe Payton opposed the plan, believing it to be premature. 
The British Commander-in-Chief, Sir Douglas Haig, supported the concept of a decisive battle but insisted that if the first two phases of the Nivelle scheme were unsuccessful, the British effort would be moved north to Flanders. Nivelle threatened to resign if the offensive did not go ahead and having not lost a battle, had the enthusiastic support of the British Prime Minister David Lloyd George. The French Prime Minister Aristide Briand supported Nivelle but the War Minister Laiuti resigned during a dispute with the Chamber of Deputies and the Briand government fell. A new government under Alexander Ribot took office on 20 March. The Second Battle of the Aisne involved c. 1.2 million troops and 7,000 guns on a front from Reims to Roy, with the main effort against the German positions along the Aisne River. The original plan of December 1916 was plagued by delays and information leaks. By the time the offensive began in April 1917, the Germans had received intelligence of the Allied plan and strengthened their defences on the Aisne front. The German retreat to the Hindenburg Line Operation Alberic, Alberic left a belt of devastated ground up to 25 miles 40 km deep in front of the French positions facing east from Soissons, northwards to Saint-Quentin. Alberic freed 13 to 14 German divisions which were moved to the Aisne, increasing the German garrison to 38 divisions against 53 French divisions. The German withdrawal forestalled the attacks of the British and Group d'Armées du Nord gone, but also freed French divisions for the attack. By late March, Gaon had been reduced by 11 infantry, two cavalry divisions and 50 heavy guns, which went into the French strategic reserve. Topic. Tactical developments. When Hindenburg and Ludendorff took over from Falkenhayn on 28 August 1916, the pressure being placed on the German army in France was so great that new defensive arrangements, based on the principles of depth, invisibility and immediate counter-action were formally adopted, as the only means by which the growing material strength of the French and British armies could be countered. Instead of fighting the defensive battle in the front line or from shell hole positions near it, the main fight was to take place behind the front line, out of view and out of range of enemy field artillery. Conduct of the defensive battle, Grunzatz für die Führung in der Abwurschlacht, was published on 1 December 1916. The new manual laid down the organization for the mobile defense of an area, rather than the rigid defense of a trench line. Positions necessary for the new method were defined in principles of field position construction Allgemeines Uber Stellingsbau, experience of the German First Army in the Somme battles, or Farungen der I or May in der Sommerschlacht, was published on 30 January 1917. Towards the end of the Battle of the Somme in 1916, Colonel Fritz von Loberg, Chief of Staff of the First Army, had been able to establish a line of relief divisions Ablosungsdivisionen. In his analysis of the battle, Loberg opposed the granting of discretion to front trench garrisons to retire, as he believed that maneuver did not allow the garrisons to evade Allied artillery fire, which could blanket the forward area and invited enemy infantry to occupy vacated areas unopposed. Loberg considered that spontaneous withdrawals would disrupt the counterattack reserves as they deployed and further deprive battalion and division commanders of the ability to conduct an organized defense, which the dispersal of infantry over a wider area had already made difficult. 
Loberg and other officers had severe doubts as to the ability of relief divisions to arrive on the battlefield in time to conduct an immediate counterattack from behind the battle zone and wanted the Somme practice of fighting in the front line to be retained and authority devolved no further than the battalion, so as to maintain organizational coherence. In anticipation of a methodical counterattack, Gegenangriff, after 24 to 48 hours, Hours by the relief divisions. Ludendorff was sufficiently impressed by the Loberg Memorandum to add it to the new manual of infantry training for war. Topic Prelude. Topic German defensive preparations. Topic: Unternehmen Alberich. During the German withdrawal to the Siegfriedstellung Hindenburg Line in March 1917, a modest withdrawal took place in the neighborhood of Soissons. On the 17th of March, the German defenses at Crewy and Cote 132 were found to be empty, and as French troops followed up the retirement, German troops counter-attacked at Brigny and Margeville, which reduced the speed of the French pursuit to a step-by-step -step advance. By April, the French advance had only progressed beyond Neuville-sur-Margeville and Lully. On 1 April, a French attack along the line of the Aylet Lawn Road reached the outskirts of Le Faux and Vauxhallon. Vauxhenny and Vauxhallon were occupied a few days later. <laughs> <laughs> Defensive battle In a new manual of 1 December 1916, Grundsatz für die Führung in der Abwehrschlacht im Stellungskrieg, Principles of Command for Defensive Battle, the policy of unyielding defense of ground regardless of its tactical value, was replaced by the defense of positions suitable for artillery observation and communication with the rear, where an attacking force would fight itself to a standstill and use up its resources while the defenders conserve d their strength. Defending infantry would fight in areas, with the front divisions in an outpost zone up to 3,000 yards 2, meters deep behind listening posts, with the main line of resistance placed on a reverse slope, in front of artillery observation posts, which were kept far enough back to retain observation over the outpost zone. Behind the main line of resistance was a Grosskampf zone, battle zone, a second defensive area 1,500 to 2,500 yards 1,400 to 2,300 meters deep, also placed as far as possible on ground hidden from enemy observation, while in view of German artillery observers. A Ruckwartige camp zone, rear battle zone, further back was to be occupied by the reserve battalion of each regiment. Topic: Field fortification. Principles of field fortification. Algemeines Uber Stellingsbau was published in January 1917 and by April an outpost zone, Vorpostenfeld, held by sentries, had been built along the Western Front. Sentries could retreat to larger positions, Gruppenester, held by Stotrups, five men and an NCO per truck, who would join the sentries to recapture sentry posts by immediate counterattack. Defensive procedures in the battle zone were similar but with greater numbers of men. The front trench system was the sentry line for the battle zone garrison, which was allowed to move away from concentrations of enemy fire and then counterattack to recover the battle and outpost zones. Such withdrawals were envisaged as occurring on small parts of the battlefield which had been made untenable by Allied artillery fire, as the prelude to Gegenstow in Der Stelling, immediate counterattack within the position. 
Such a decentralized battle by large numbers of small infantry detachments would present the attacker with unforeseen obstructions. Resistance from troops equipped with automatic weapons, supported by observed artillery fire, would increase the further the advance progressed. A school was opened in January 1917 to teach infantry commanders the new methods. Given the Allies' growing superiority in munitions and manpower, attackers might still penetrate to the second artillery protection line, leaving in their wake German garrisons isolated in Widerstandsnester, resistance nests, Wiedas, still inflicting losses and disorganization on the attackers. As the attackers tried to capture the Wiedas and dig in near the German second line, Sturmbattalinen and Sturmregimenter of the counterattack divisions would advance from the Ruckwartige Kampfzone into the battle zone, in an immediate counterattack, Gegensto aus der Tiefe. If the immediate counterattack failed, the Eingriff counterattack divisions would take their time to prepare a methodical attack, provided the lost ground was essential to the retention of the main position. Such methods required large numbers of reserve divisions ready to move to the battlefront. The reserve was obtained by creating 22 divisions by internal reorganization of the army, bringing divisions from the Eastern Front and by shortening the Western Front, in Operation Alberic. By the spring of 1917, the German army in the West had a strategic reserve of 40 divisions. Topic. Battle. Topic. Third Army Group d'Armes du Nord Gone, on the northern flank of Group d'Armes de Reserve Gar, had been reduced to the Third Army with three corps in line, by the transfer of the First Army to the Gar. The Third Army began French operations, with preliminary attacks on German observation points at Saint Quentin on 1–4 and 10 April. Large reconnaissance forces were set towards the Dallin Spur on 1 April, which were not able to gain footholds in the German front defences, although the British Fourth Army to the north captured the woods around Savy. On 2 April a bigger French attack on Dallin failed but on 3 April the Third Army attacked after a terrific bombardment, on a front of about 8 miles 13 kilometers north of a line from Castors to essigny le grand and Benet, between the Somme Canal at Dallin, southwest of Saint-Quentin and the Oise, after another attack on 4 April, the villages of Dallin, Giffecourt, Cerisi and Coates, Hills, 111, 108, and 121 south of Ervillers, were captured and the German position at the apex of the triangle from from Ham to Saint Quentin and La Fere was made vulnerable to a further attack. The French had attacked in intense cold and driving rain, with chronic supply shortages caused by the German destruction of roads and immense French traffic jams on the supply routes, which had been sufficiently repaired to bear traffic. East of the Oise and north of the Aisne, the Third Army took the southern and northwestern outskirts of Le Faux and Vauxigny. On 4 April German counter-attacks north of the Aisne were repulsed south of Vauxigny and Le Faux. The French captured Moy on the west bank of the Oise, along with Ervillers and Grugies, a village opposite Dallin on the east bank of the Somme. North of the farm of La Foley, the Germans were pushed back and three 155 mm in howitzers and several Luftstreitkraft lorries were captured. Beyond Dallin French patrols entered the southwestern suburb of Saint Quentin. The main attack by Gaon was planned as two successive operations: an attack by 13th Corps to capture Rocourt and Moulin de Tousvents southwest of the city, to guard the flank of the principal attack by 13th Corps and 35th Corps on Harley and Elaine Court, intended to capture the high ground east and southeast of Saint Quentin. 
Success would enable the French to menace the flank of the German forces to the south, along the Oise to Le Fier and the rear of the German positions south of the St. Gobin Massif, due to be attacked from the south by the 6th Army of the Gare. The French were inhibited from firing on St. Quentin, which allowed the Germans unhampered observation from the cathedral and from factory chimneys and to sight artillery in the suburbs, free from counter-battery fire. French attacks could only take place at night or during twilight and snow, rain, low clouds and fog made aircraft observation for the artillery impossible. German work on the Siegfriedstellung Hindenburg line continued but the first line, built along reverse slopes was complete and from which flanking fire could be brought to bear on any attack. Concrete machinegun emplacements proved immune to all but the heaviest and most accurate howitzer fire and the main position was protected by an observation line along the crest in front, which commanded no man's land, which was 800 to 1,200 yards 730 to 1,100 meters deep. The British Fourth Army was unable to assist the French with an attack, due to a lack of divisions after transfers north to to the British Third Army but was able to assist with artillery fire from the north and kept a cavalry division in readiness to join a pursuit. The French artillery had been reduced to c. 250 guns by transfers south to Gar, which was insufficient to bombard the German defences and conduct counter-batter fire simultaneously. On 13 April at 5 am, 13th Corps attacked with two divisions, the 26th Division on the right took the German first line and then defeated two German counter-attacks but the 25th Division on the left was repulsed almost immediately by uncut wire and machine gun fire, despite French field artillery being advanced into no man's land at the last minute to cut the wire. Casualties in the 13 attacking battalions were severe. The 25th Division was ordered by the Army Commander, General Humbert to attack again at 6 p.m. but the orders arrived too late and the attack did not take place. French aircraft were active over the attack front but at midday large formations of German fighters arrived and forced the French artillery observation and reconnaissance aircraft back behind the front line. By the end of the day the 26th Division had held on to 100 yards 91 meters of the German front trench and the 25th Division had been forced back to its jumping-off trenches. German artillery fire had not been heavy and the defense had been based on machine-gun fire and rapid counter-attacks. The 13th Corps and 35th Corps attack due next day was eventually cancelled. Topic: Fifth and Sixth Armies. The Fifth Army attacked on the 16th of April at 6 a.m., which had dawned misty and overcast. From the beginning, German machine gunners were able to engage the French infantry and inflict many casualties, although German artillery fire was far less destructive. Corsi on the right flank was captured by the 1st Brigade of the Russian Expeditionary Force in France but the advance was stopped at the Aisne-Marne Canal. The canal was crossed further north and Bermericourt was captured against a determined German defence. From Bermericourt to the Aisne the French attack was repulsed and south of the river French infantry were forced back to their start line. On the north bank of the Aisne the French attack was more successful, the 42nd and 69th Divisions reached the German second position between the Aisne and the Miette, the advance north of Berry penetrating 2.5 miles kilometers. .Tanks to accompany the French infantry to the third objective arrived late and the troops were too exhausted and reduced by casualties to follow them. Half of the tanks were knocked out in the German defences and then acted as pillboxes in advance of the French infantry, which helped to defeat a big German counterattack. 
German infantry launched hasty counter-attacks along the front, recaptured Bermericourt and conducted organized counter-attacks where the French infantry had advanced the furthest. At Sapanaul in the 32nd Corps area, the 37th Division attack failed, which released German artillery in the area to fire in enfilade into the flanks of the adjacent divisions, which had been able to advance and the guns were also able to engage the French tanks north of the Aisne. The defeat of the 37th Division restored the German defences between Lavra and Juvencourt. The left flank division of the 32nd Corps and the right division of the 5th Corps penetrated the German 2nd position south of Juvencourt but French tanks attacking south of the Miette from Bois de Beaumare advanced to disaster. German observers at Crayon, on the east end of the Chemin des Dames, were able to direct artillery fire against the tanks and 23 were destroyed behind the French front line. Few of the tanks reached the German defences and by the evening only 10 tanks were operational. On the left flank, 5th Corps was stopped at the Bois des Baches and the hamlet of Le Ville aux Bois. On the Chemin des Dames, 1st Corps made very little progress and by evening had advanced no further than the German support line, 200 to 300 yards 180 to 270 meters ahead. The French infantry had suffered many casualties and few of the leading divisions were capable of resuming the attack. The advance had failed to reach objectives which were to have fallen by 9.30 am but 7,000 German prisoners had been taken. The attack on the right flank of the 6th Army, which faced north between Ulches and Missy, took place from Ulches to Super and had less success than the 5th Army. The 2nd Colonial Corps advanced for 0.5 miles kilometers in the first 30 minutes and was then stopped. The 20th Corps attack from Vendres to the Oise Ain Canal had more success. The 153rd Division on the right flank reached the Chemin des Dames south of Courtcon after a second attack, managing an advance of 1.25 miles (2.01 kilometers). The 6th Corps advanced its right flank west of the Oise Ain Canal, but its left flank was held up. On the east-facing northern flank near Le Faux, 1st Colonial Corps was able to penetrate only a few hundred yards into the defences of the Condé Regal Condé Switch Trench, and failed to take Moisey Farm Plateau. Le Faux was captured and then lost to a counterattack before changing hands several times, until finally captured on 19 April. To the east of Vauxhallon, at the north end of the 6th Army, Monte Singes was captured with the help of British heavy artillery but then lost to a German counterattack. The 6th Army operations took c. 3,500 prisoners but no breakthrough had been achieved but the German second position been reached at only one point. On the second day, Nivelle ordered the 5th Army to attack northeastwards to reinforce success, believing that the Germans intended to hold the ground in front of the 6th Army. The 5th Army was not able substantially to advance on 17 April but the 6th Army, which had continued to attack overnight, forced a German withdrawal from the area of Bray, Condé and Le Faux to the Siegfriedstellung, which ran from Le Faux Mill to the Chemin des Dames and joined the original defences at Courtcon. The German retirement was carried out in a rush and many guns were left behind, along with vast stocks of munitions. The French infantry reached the new German positions with an advance of 4 miles Topic: Fourth Army. On the 17th of April, the Fourth Army, on the left of Group d'Armées de Centre (GAC), began the subsidiary attack in Champagne from Auberive to the east of Reims, which became known as Bataille des Monts, with the 8th, 17th, and 12th Corps on an 11 kilometers (6.8 miles) front. 
The attack began at 4.45 am in cold rain alternating with snow showers. The right flank guard to the east of Suips was established by the 24th Division and Auberive on the east bank of the river and the 34th Division took Mont Cornelet and Mont Blonde. The Monts were held against a German counterattack on 19 April by the 5th, 6th, Eingrief Divisions and the 23rd Division and one regiment between Noroy and Morinvilliers. On the west bank the Moroccan division was repulsed on the right and captured Mont Sans Nam on the left. To the northeast of the hill the advance reached a depth of 1.5 miles kilometers, and next day the advance was pressed beyond Mont Hot. The 4th Army attacks took 3,550 prisoners and 27 guns. German attacks on 27 May had temporary success before French counter-attacks recaptured the ground around Mont Hot. Lack of troops had forced the Germans into piecemeal attacks instead of a simultaneous attack along the whole front. Tenth Army Nivelle ordered the 10th Army forward between the 5th and 6th Armies on 21 April. The 9th Corps and 18th Corps took over between Crayon and Hurtbys and local operations were continued on the fronts of the 4th and 5th Armies with little success. An attack on Brimont on 4 to 5 May, the capture of which would have been of great tactical value, was postponed on the orders of the French government and never took place. The 10th Army captured the California Plateau on the Chemin des Dames. The 6th Army captured the Siegfriedstellung for 2.5 miles, 4.0 kilometers along the Chemin des Dames and then advanced at the salient opposite Le Faux. An attack on 5 May southeast of Voxalon took Moisey Farm and Le Faux Mill and repulsed German counter-attacks. Next day another advance was conducted north of the mill. German counter-attacks continued in constant attack and counter-attack in the Soissons sector. By the end of 5 May the 6th Army had reached the outskirts of Almont and taken c. 4,000 prisoners. The offensive continued on the 4th Army front where Mont Cornelet was captured and by 10 May 28,500 prisoners and 187 guns had been taken by the French armies. <laughs> <laughs> German 7th Army counter-attacks Between Vauxhallon and Reims and on the Morinvilliers Heights the French had captured much of the German defensive zone, despite the failure to break through an army group, German Crown Prince counter-attack before the French could consolidate, mostly by night, towards the summits of the Chemin des Dames and the Morinvilliers Massif. During the nights of the 6 7 and 7 8 May, the Germans attacked from Vauxhallon to Crayon and on the night of 8 9 May German attacks were repulsed at Cerny, Le Bavel, Hutby's Farm and the California Plateau. Next day, German counter-attacks on Chevreux, northeast of Crayon at the foot of the east end of the Chemin des Dames were defeated. More attacks on the night of 9 10 May were defeated by the French artillery and machine gun fire. The French managed to advance on the northern slopes of the Vauclerc Plateau. On 10 May, another German attack at Chevreux was defeated and the French advanced north of Sancy and on the night of 10 11 May, and the following day, German attacks were repulsed on the California Plateau and at Cerny. On 16 May, a German counter-offensive, on a front of 2.5 miles kilometers from the northwest of Le Faux Mill to the Soissons Lawn Railway, was defeated and after dark more attacks north of Le Faux Mill and northwest of Bray and Léonois also failed. French attacks on 17 May took ground east of Crayon and on 18 May, German attacks on the California Plateau and on the Chemin des Dames just west of the Oise-Aine Canal, were repulsed. 
On 20 May, a counter-offensive to retake the French positions from Crayon to the east of Fort de la Malmaison, was mostly defeated by artillery fire and where German infantry were able to advance through the French defensive barrages, French infantry easily forced them back, 1,000 unwounded prisoners were taken. On 21 May, German surprise attacks on the Vauclerc Plateau failed and on the following evening, the French captured several of the remaining observation posts dominating the Aylet Valley and three German trench lines east of Chevreux. A German counterattack on the California Plateau was smashed by artillery and infantry small arms fire and 350 prisoners taken. Topic. Battle of the Observatories At 8.30 pm on 23 May, a German assault on the Vauclerc Plateau was defeated and on 24 May, a renewed attack was driven back in confusion. During the night the French took the wood southeast of Chevreux and almost annihilated two German battalions. On 25 May, three German columns attacked a salient northwest of Bray en Léonois and gained a footing in the French first trench, before being forced out by a counterattack. On 26 May German attacks on salients east and west of Cerny were repulsed and from 26 to 27 May, German attacks between Vauxhallon and Le Faux Mill broke down. Two attacks on 28 May at Hurtbys were defeated by French artillery fire and on the night of 31 May to 1 June and attacks by the Germans west of Cerny also failed. On the morning of 1 June, after a heavy bombardment, German troops captured several trenches north of Le Faux Mill and lost them to counter-attacks in the afternoon. On 2 June a bigger German attack began, after an intensive bombardment of the French front, from the north of Le Faux to the east of Barry Obac. On the night of 2 June, two German divisions made five attacks on the east, west and central parts of the California Plateau and the west end of the Vauclerc Plateau. The Germans attacked in waves, at certain points advancing shoulder to shoulder, supported by flamethrower detachments and gained some ground on the Vauclerc Plateau, until French counter-attacks recovered the ground. Despite the French holding improvised defences and the huge volumes of German artillery fire used to prepare attacks, the German organised counter-attacks, Gegenangriff, met with little success and at Chevreux northeast of Crayon, the French had even pushed further into the Lawn Plain. Topic. Aftermath Topic. Analysis In 2015, Uffendel wrote that retrospective naming and dating of events can affect the way in which the past is understood. The Second Battle of the Aisne began on 16 April but the duration and extent of the battle have been interpreted differently. The ending of the battle is usually given as mid-May. Uffendel called this politically convenient, since this excluded the Battle of La Malmaison in October, making it easier to blame Nivelle. Uffendel wrote that the exclusion of La Malmaison was artificial, since the attack was begun from the ground taken from April to May. General Franchette Desperé called La Malmaison, the decisive phase of the battle. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 that began on the 16th of April and ended on the 2nd of November. The offensive advanced the front line by six to seven kilometers, 3.7 to 4.3 miles, on the front of the Sixth Army, which took 5,300 prisoners and a large amount of equipment. 
The operation had been planned as a decisive blow to the Germans. By the 20th of April, it was clear that the strategic intent of the offensive had not been achieved, and by the 25th of April, most of the fighting had ended. Casualties had reached 20% in the French armies by the 10th of May, and some divisions suffered more than 60% losses. On 3 May, the French 2nd Division refused orders, similar refusals and mutiny spread through the armies. The Nivelle Offensive was abandoned in confusion on 9 May. The politicians and public were stunned by the chain of events, and on 16 May, Nivelle was sacked and moved to North Africa. He was replaced by the considerably more cautious Peyton with Folk as chief of the general staff, who adopted a strategy of healing and defense to avoid casualties and to restore morale. Peyton had 40 to 62 mutineers shot as examples and introduced reforms to improve the welfare of French troops, which did much to restore morale. The operations in Champagne on the 20th of May ended the Nivelle offensive. Most of the Chemin des Dames plateau, particularly the east end, which dominated the plain north of the Aisne, had been captured. Bois des Buttes, Ville aux Bois, Bois des Botches, and the German first and second positions from there to the Aisne had also been captured. South of the river, the 5th and 10th Armies on the plain near Lavre had managed to advance west of the Brimont Heights. East of Reims, the 4th Army had captured most of the Morinvilliers Massif and Oberive, then advanced along the Suipi, which provided good jumping off positions for a new offensive. The cost of the Nivelle offensive in casualties and loss of morale were great, but German losses were also high, and the tactical success of the French in capturing elaborately fortified positions and defeating counter attacks reduced German morale. The Germans had been forced out of three of the most elaborately fortified positions on the Western Front and failed to recapture them. Vimy Ridge, the Scarp Heights, the Caverns, Spurs and Plateau of the Chemin des Dames and the Morinvilliers Massif had been occupied for more than two years, carefully surveyed by German engineers and fortified to make them impregnable. In six weeks all were lost and the Germans were left clinging to the eastern or northern edges of the ridges of the summits. The French tactic of assault brutal et continue suited the German defensive dispositions, since much of the new construction had taken place on reverse slopes. The speed of attack and the depth of the French objectives meant that there was no time to establish artillery observation posts overlooking the Aylet Valley, in the areas where French infantry had reached the ridge. The tunnels and caves under the ridge nullified the destructive effect of the French artillery, which was also reduced by poor weather and by German air superiority, which made French artillery observation aircraft even less effective. The rear edge of the German battle zone along the ridge had been reinforced with machine gun posts and the German divisional commanders decided to hold the front line, rather than giving ground elastically, few of the Eingriff divisions were needed to intervene in the battle. <laughs> <laughs> Casualties In 1939 Wynne wrote that the French lost 117,000 casualties including 32,000 killed in the first few days but that the effect on military and civilian morale was worse than the casualties. In the 1939 volume of Der Weltkrieg, the German official historians recorded German losses to the end of June as 163,000 men including 37,000 missing and claimed French casualties of 250,000 to 300,000 men, including 10,500 taken prisoner. In 1962, G. W. L. Nicholson the Canadian official historian, recorded German losses of c. 163,000 and French casualties of 187,000 men. 
A 2003 web publication gave 108,000 French casualties, 49,526 in the 5th Army, 30,296 casualties in the 6th Army, 4,849 in the 10th Army, 2,169 in the 4th Army and 1,486 in the 3rd Army. In 2005, Doughty quoted figures of 134,000 French casualties on the Aisne from 16 to 25 April, of whom 30,000 men were killed, 100,000 were wounded and 4,000 were taken prisoner. The rate of casualties was the worst since November 1914. From 16 April to 10 May the 4th, 5th, 6th and 10th Armies took 28,500 prisoners and 187 guns. The advance of the 6th Army was one of the largest made by a French army since trench warfare began. <laughs> Subsequent operations The Battle of La Malmaison, Bataille de la Malmaison, 23 to 27 October, led to the capture of the village and fort of La Malmaison and control of the Chemin des Dames Ridge. The Seventh Army commander Bone was not able to establish a defense in depth along the Chemin des Dames because the ridge was a hog's back, and the only alternative was to retire north of the Canal de Las A Lane. The German artillery was outnumbered about 3 to 1 and on the front of the 14th Division 32 German batteries were bombarded by 125 French artillery batteries. Much of the German artillery was silenced before the French attack. Gas bombardments in the Aylet Valley became so dense that the carriage of ammunition and supplies to the front was made impossible. From 24 to 25 October, the 21st and 14th Corps advanced rapidly, and the 1st Cavalry Corps was brought forward into the 14th Corps area, in case the Germans collapsed. On 25 October the French captured the village and forest of Pinon and closed up to the line of the Canal de Las A Lane. In four days the attack had advanced 6 miles kilometers and forced the Germans from the narrow plateau of the Chemin des Dames, back to the north bank of the Aylet Valley. The French took 11,157 prisoners, 200 guns and 220 heavy mortars. French losses were 2,241 men killed, 8,162 wounded and 1,460 missing from 23 to 26 October, 10% of the casualties of the attacks during the Nivelle Offensive. Topic Notes Equals Equals Footnotes <laughs>